to IDE, UNICEF, and the Habib Center for their organizational efforts and contributions in preparing for this two-day event. Likewise, my special thanks go to all the participants for sparing precious time to attend this event. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to speak a little bit about our foundation, the Sasagawa Peace Foundation. Established 34 years ago, back in 1986, it is one of the oldest and largest private foundations based in Japan. As its name, Peace Foundation implies, it has worked to promote mutual understanding between Japan and other countries and regions, as well as mutual collaborations to address a diverse array of global issues. It is worth mentioning here that our foundation places special focus on Asia and carries out a variety of projects in the region. In the past three decades, we have conducted and engaged in such projects in southern Thailand and also in northeast region of India. There are few unique features we are proud of in these projects. For example, not only providing financial support, we engage in grassroots level activities by sending our own staff members who understand local languages. And also, our activities are long lasting. In the case of uh, our activities in South Thailand, we are there for more than 10 years. We have also projects on cross-border migration, gender equality, as well as platform building of regional media network. SPF, Sasaga Peace Foundation, also undertakes various surveys and research projects for emerging issues in Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's world, we are witnessing increasingly significant social divisions due to ethnical, religious, economic, and various other reasons. The recent rise of narrowly defined nationalism or social divisions pose a serious threat to our society. Globalization should be a driving factor for the people to be united beyond the national borders However, ironically, the world as we see it is crisscrossed with dividing lines. In some cases, we see the majority oppresses the voice of the minority, encouraging identity politics, hate speech, and disinformation. Regrettably, there are many leaders across the globe who take advantage of divisions in society. Many stop respecting political decisions unless they feel that their ideologies are properly heard. This situation causes society to be divided further into smaller groups in a vicious cycle. Asia is not immune from this global phenomenon. Ladies and gentlemen, to heal social divisions and fragmentation, it is high time for us to revisit together to reach local philosophies and wisdoms of Southeast Asia. Diversity in ASEAN countries has been fostered through peaceful coexistence of different cultures, religions, and ethnicities of the region. We should learn how ASEAN countries have built on their various initiatives promoting tolerance, mutual understanding, and efforts to respect each other. Diversity in ASEAN countries is an asset that all of us should be inspired by. Asia is going through drastic social changes and facing new global issues like environment. While the globalization provides opportunity to connect with regions, business, people's movement, and interest in the ways and the scale that we never experienced before. ASEAN ways of peaceful coexistence have strong potential to offer the world unique approaches to tackle global issues. 
It is the same for Japan. Increasing interconnection with Southeast Asia, Japan is seriously in need of the wisdoms and the practices of ASEAN countries. Ladies and gentlemen, this two-day event shall be our opportunities to express and to learn from each other on peaceful coexistence in Southeast Asia. I truly believe that diversity is not a threat to social cohesion, but a meaningful platform to respect each other. In concluding my remarks, I wish you all the best and hope all of you here will have a fruitful and constructive dialogue, which will ultimately help to enhance your wisdom in contributing to a better Asia. Termakasi Banya, Sudahadir Achara Senya Seminar Peaceful Coexistence. Thank you very much. Majlis mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada Mr. Su Iki Ono di atas ucapan aluan itu tadi. Majlis pada pagi ini diteruskan dengan ucap tama persidangan serantau hidup bersama dalam budaya damai 2020. Oleh itu, majlis dengan segala hormatnya mempersilakan yang berhormat Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim, pengurusi kaukus reformasi dan tabi urus merangkap pengurusi Institut Pemikiran Islam Antarabangsa Peaceful Coexistence dalam menguatkan rantau ASEAN cabaran menghadapi masa hadapan Majlis dengan segala hormatnya mempersilakan Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Suci Ono San Hari Ketua Ketua Mas for all the support with the Sadaqawa Peace Foundation, Surah Sidi Fadil, Surah Sofyan, Bibi Fortuna Anwar, tetamu yang dimuliakan. Saya percaya sidang ini, dia tidak menarik minat umum, kerana minat umum itu masih terikat dengan identiti, kaum, agama, kabilah, kelompok, tetapi uh, perlu ada kesedaran di kalangan saudara untuk mengangkat wacana ini sebagai wacana segar di kalangan masyarakat dan rakyat. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I was commending this uh, initiative by ED Universal and Colleagues, supported by Sasagua Peace Foundation, because although the general trend in the last decade seems to be disconcerting, not only in Malaysia, Indonesia, or the region, but also in Europe and the United States of America, where the, you can notice the rise of fascism, where identity becomes essentially the key uh, of fundamental consideration where the empty others, either religion or race, immigration, seems to be on the rise. You can notice, for example, in Europe, the rise of political parties able to win and master phenomenal support precisely because the appeal to race or religion or the fear against the other. This is mm, something which uh, we as Asians and Southeast Asians, particularly the Malay world, and as Muslims, they must, as a practicing Muslim, we must see this as a contradiction. You can't be a Muslim and a good Malay, you continue to support, endorse, and become a fanatical supporter of identity in a narrow, blinkered sense. Because um, 
what we understand as Islam is always respecting and knowing the other how is it that the Quran can be so emphatic and clear to recognize the presence of tribes within clear instruction so that you know, appreciate, learn from one another and yet you find Muslim parties, Muslim groups all over the world, including this country, promoting basically this idea of being seized, being under siege and can only survive if we dispute the other. Now this is not peculiar to Malays, Muslims or Asia. As I said, it is something that you have noticed, the, uh, the rise of uh, fascism, Nazism in the past, colonialism and imperialism well um, discussed in this brilliant book by Edward Sain, Orientalism, about considering all the others as the other. I remember a very known Indian social anthropologist, Ashish Nandi, who incidentally is being invited to party to visit us hopefully next month. He's quite elderly, but um, I, I consider him one of the great social anthropologists uh, who has the courage to articulate these issues. And it is relevant to our understanding about how identity perceived out of ignorance. You know, many of you are familiar what I said when I used to quote, even during the Palestinian conference, uh, last few days by Edward Sain in his uh, critique of uh, Huntington's clash of civilization he said it is clash of ignorance there is no clash of civilization throughout history but there is a clash of ignorance you are ignorant of the other and also some of the Muslim reaction for example the western mind the western society so we group them under one monolithic group that represents a particular view because of the ignorance. So he said clash of ignorance. Last night and this morning I was standing with uh, two books which uh, I found it profound. I was in Georgetown uh, by uh, one great friend of mine, Amatya Sen in his identity and violence. And, and uh, as you know, Amatya was ex exceedingly kind to me by insisting that uh, my comments is in the cover of the book. Because we, we did discuss this. I mean, he remembered uh, discussing this problem because he thought essentially it is an American problem, an Indian problem. And then I said to him, Amatya is also a Malaysian problem. So in his book, um, Identity and Violence, he used the term illusion of destiny. The Hindus will, in India will only survive under Hitler, and the rest, uh, small minorities, are a threat to their survival. The Muslims in Malaysia feel, therefore, if they do not uh, become more assertive and pronounced, they will be under siege by the Hindus, who happens to be 6% in this country. So the battle continues. Why? There's an illusion of identity. Now the term illusion is also used by Stephen Hawking. It's interesting because they are all smart. You can't say they are ignorant. Quite a sign use the term ignorance, culture of ignorance, but um, they are not ignorant. They all have PhDs, some of them. Some of them have big turbans and the great alim. I don't know if turban, big turban big, uh, uh, represents uh, knowledge, I don't know, it's heavy. Uh, but they are, of course, knowledgeable in some areas. 
So Stephen Hawking used the term illusion of knowledge. Amartya Sen used the term illusion of identity. You think this is your survival, this is your culture, superior, great history, great civilization, and the rest are all pedestrian in a sense. So, illusion of knowledge because the little knowledge that you have of the other happens to be an illusion because you do not have a profound understanding of the other. He mentioned in his, his uh, Amatya Sen, in the book I remember, uh, the attitude, for example, you look at the Arab world or the Middle East, monolithic, the Arabs. We counter that argument. We look at the West, the West. It's an illusion. It's not the reality. And when I was um, helping the uh, International Islamic University in the initial stages in the 90s, over the sentiments against, they are very strong against the West. I, I grew up in the, in the student activism. Today we should know that uh, in the 70s, very strong anti-West. Fair, in my many ways is correct. But there is a very, very little effort in the Muslim world to understand the West in its philosophical construct, policies. We don't. We have uh, Islamic studies program, Asian studies, Indonesian studies at Cornell, etc., etc., in Australia, in the West. You have hardly any university in Malaysia trying to understand in depth Western philosophy, Western civilization, Western technology. Of course, my generation, we know Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson, which is not a problem. But the problem is because it ends there. You know America through, uh, I don't know, Justin Bieber probably nowadays. But uh, I don't know, that will be a British or American, I'm not sure. But so, so my, 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 my appeal is to get a closer understanding. I appreciate uh, the Duas Initiative UNICEF. There is a, a greater effort to go deeper in understanding. So this conference, Suiji San, is an attempt, again, to go deeper to these issues. You see? Uh, if you say peaceful coexistence in Malaysia, is the Malays and the majority, or Muslims, the Hindus, the Indians, the Chinese, who are either Confucianists or Buddhists or Christians, the Dayaks and the Kadazans. I mean, how do you say peaceful coexistence if you don't try to understand and appreciate them? So Amatya Sen said actually, He lived as an Indian in a variety of categories. It's very interesting. He said, who am I? I'm an Indian. I grew up as a Hindu. In a country that was ruled by the Muslims and who had contributed immensely to Indian civilization. So, I'm a Hindu who appreciates Islam and his contribution. I'm also agree because he studied the Sunni Titekan of the the one the, the institution in Calcutta started by Rabindranath Tagore. So he learned Sanskrit when he was young. Where's your language? Sanskrit? Malayali probably was in that he was from Kerala, but he is more proficient in English language. Who are the literary giants? I love Rabindranath Tagore. I'm a great fan of Shakespeare. So who are you? So this is what he termed as a variety of categories. Now we, for example, I mean, for us, I'm very Malay and proud of my language, my culture, my civilization. I try very hard to become a good practicing Muslim and enhance my understanding of my religion. But I'm a Malaysian. Many of my brothers and sisters 
I consider great friends are Hindus and Christians and Buddhists and Dayas. I care about them. What, what am I there for? Therefore, it comes under this variety of categories. The book by Amatya Sen, Identity and Violence, The Illusion of Destiny, which I think should be a reference book that Jimmy said. You don't have the copy, you can borrow from my library. As long as you return. I have a very strict uh, rule. Nobody takes out the book from my library. Because invariably it will not be returned. <laughs> now can I give a personal note here? Yeah? I once borrowed from Professor Sa Hussein Ali. Professor Sa Hussein Ali, the work by what time? I'm sure they will remember the uh, what time on no, no, it's anyway, it's the other book. Uh, anyway, that's a book by what time? I bought when I was in Abi. Then I became minister, deputy prime minister, went to prison, came out, and go browsing through one after another book. And I found this book by what time? Sayyid Ali, which means I borrowed from him about 30 years ago. <laughs> and I didn't return. So I had to write a note to him, prof, my, with my apologies. Because I have a valid excuse, I was in prison. <laughs> so I, I sent that. But, but the moral of the story is never put <laughs> land the book. God, now you can you photocopy, please. Um, I had this, uh, I was preparing for the conference on Palestine, and I wanted to uh, get some of my friends to read Politics of Dispossession. A great book by Edward Sine on the Palestinian cause, and um, they said, uh, "No." I said, "Take, make copies, and put back in the library." The lesson learned. I'm sorry. So, there's a personal to remember. But worse are people who neither borrow nor read. <laughs> now, the other book, which is which is very important to support this uh, peaceful coexistence uh, theory. Is Kwame Anthony Apaya, uh, which was quite phenomenal in the, uh, in the late 90s, I think, or the early 2000s. Very powerful thesis, which I strongly recommend. This is uh, about um, identity and cosmopolitanism, or the ethics of identity, where he proclaimed, as I think, as a group, originally from Ghana. English mother, he said, I am citizen of the world. Uh, the, you see, this humane humane philosophy. If you have a strong sense of humanity, you care for your neighbors, which is a uh, very uh, a pillar in Islamic ethics. Your, your what is this, this uh, community, your immediate community in Islamic term, your Haria. This is, it just uh, stems from humanity. You care. If you are poor, you have an abject, uh, you have to deal with abject poverty within the community. Happen to be Muslim. Out of the ten Muslim houses, then you have find another one Hindu family. You know, the care, compassion and the rahma must be relatively equal. That is the strength and superiority of Islam. You don't discriminate the poor amidst your, amongst your neighbors. And this is what, I mean, the essence of you talking about peaceful coexistence, of course I'm sure Sophia and, and Dewi and some the other professors can, you know, de de deliberate uh, more intellectually, profoundly. But I think I want to just generate your interest about this basic fundamental issue. What pokoknya yang saya mau tekankan di sini adalah bahwa agama itu sebenarnya dan budaya itu bukan satu kesalahan, malah kekuatan kerana mendorong ke arah kemanusiaan. Yang hilang di kalangan kita ini yang menyebabkan kita bicara soal peaceful coexistence, crisis identity, 
kemarahan faham perkauman sempit fasisme dan dulunya nazisme itu justru kerana kejahinan dan kedangkalan dan kerana hilangnya rasa kemanusiaan dalam hati senubari mana mungkin kita sebagai seorang yang beragama tidak berbeli kemanusiaan kerana Islam itu tegak atas prinsip kemanusiaan dan dan kehebatan budaya dan tamadun Islam itu justru kerana ia menampilkan sosok yang luar biasa yang tidak kabilah yang tidak kaum yang tidak wilayah tetapi kemanusiaan sejagat maka kalau kita mau hidup tentunya berpangkal kepada keyakinan kita misi tercerna dari keyakinan atau akidah kita yang memancarkan satu sistem akhlak akhlak ini apa? Sui Chono was lamenting to me that the whole of Sha'alan could not find a bottle of beer <laughs> well that's that is part of our belief systems it's okay but what I'm saying is ethics and character is beyond that is is how you run a government run a society deal with your neighbors and conduct yourself jadi ini yang disebut etika dalam pemtadbiran pemerintahan dan yang ditekankan dalam sudut yang lain oleh kedua-duanya Kwame Anthony Apaya dan juga Amatya Sen jadi dia kata saya bicara dengan Osman dan Redwan tadi tulis sebelum pagi sekarang tak boleh baca ini yang masalah saya orang tanya hmm, Pak Habibie marhum yang saya amat kasih dia kata Pak Anwar mana, mana bukunya saya kata ada nota-notanya cukup tapi Pak saya tulis di penjara kalau tulis terang sangat saya takut dia rampas jadi saya tulis itu agak tulisannya jelek masalahnya sekarang saya enggak bisa baca <laughs> saya which is true saya minta anak-anak um, yang pintar-pintar uh, di, yang sedang uh, usahakan dalam PhD program baca tapi kalau dalam satu halaman kerana 30 perkataan dia tak dapat baca nah, itu problemnya tak apa itu <laughs> saya gurau sikit now so yang kita bicarakan ini ialah harus ingat ya kita tidak akan berhasil kalau prasangka kita kian menebak yang bukan tidak harus tercerna daripada orang yang beragama kita tidak harus ekologetik menyatakan kita bangga dengan budaya Melayu dan tak pada Melayu saya berbangga ataupun kerana saya yakin dengan Islam dan penyelesaian Islam tidak perlu ekologetik tetapi harus istiqamah konsisten untuk mendapatkan perubahan yang selari dengan ajaran suci agama yang tidak semestinya difahami justru kerana kecelaruan yang berlaku akibat dari pengamal agama itu sendiri jadi kalau mau kita bicara tentang kedamaian di selatan Filipina atau dulu di Aceh atau selatan uh, Thailand kita cerna dari itu harus ada kekuatan untuk menyatakan penyelesaian itu mesti mendamakan keamanan tanpa keamanan sukar di jana pertumbuhan dan dijamin pengagihan atau pemerataan ekonomi yang lebih saksasam jadi mudah-mudahan dengan wacana dua hari ini dan menukil pandangan-pandangan bernas dari teman-teman kita dapat memanfaatkannya untuk terus bekerja menyampaikan pandangan ini bahawa pertama perdamaian 
keduanya mesti berteraskan kepada kemanusiaan dan keadilan kita bicara pendamai ya seperti mana deal of the century untuk Palestina untuk Palestin ya. dia memaksa kedamaian tetapi mengekalkan kesaliman itu tidak mungkin peaceful coexistence would require and demand that the resolution must be somewhat amicable and just and justice is fairness you cannot resolve the problem in any sports pas in Indonesia or Malaysia or Thailand or the Philippines if you continue to perpetrate injustice and oppression the concomitant to the principle of peace must be justice so in our deliberations of peaceful coexistence is the spirit reviving the spirit of humanity and seeking an amicable resolution not uh, insisting on one particular view but to be able to listen appreciate the concerns of the other of course it is easier said than done i i'm reminded because uh, you have david fortune and who, who had actually practical experience in government assisting uh, baba habibi because the theoretical framework we will discuss is easier but to having to deal with the more contentious explosive issues is more difficult it requires a lot of patience wisdom and may allah reward our efforts assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Majlis mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih kepada Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim di atas ucapan sebentar tadi. Mohon izin kebenaran yang berhormat Datuk Seri untuk membuka sesi soal jawab. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, Bapak Anwar senang sekali melihat Bapak dalam keadaan sehat dan dan sangat artikulat seperti biasa uh, my, my, my question is when you mention about this uh, illusion and uh, the uh, stress on identity you talk about siege mentality Ya, bahwa kita selalu merasa terancam gitu. Nah, bagi kelompok yang lemah, perasaan terancam itu bisa dipahami. Mungkin Bapak Anwar bisa menjelaskan kenapa orang yang sebenarnya pada posisi mayoritas, yang sudah memiliki akses terhadap power dan sebagainya, sekarang ini justru juga mengalami siege mentality tersebut ini yang kan fenomena global ya di Indonesia, di Malaysia muslim itu kan mayoritas tetapi selalu memiliki mental minoritas misalnya kenapa orang Anglo-Saxon protes uh, ini white Anglo-Saxon protes was in America yang berkuasa selama ini tiba-tiba mengalami how so far maybe, maybe maybe you can you can uh, share us your perspective thank you assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh um saya wajib bin sid um saya nak uh, soalkan dua uh, perkara lah yang pertamanya sisi-sisi 
yang utamanya berkenaan dengan pasal saya dengar daripada semalam uh, wacana uh, daripada Dr. Sidi Fadil, guru saya dan sampai Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim saya nampak ada beberapa perkara yang mungkin Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim mungkin boleh bagi komen yang utamanya kita ni macam terjebak satu um, satu problem uh, bila daripada dulu lagi bila tidak ada khalifah Islam kita nak buat negara Islam bila kita nak buat negara Islam akhir sekali kita jadi susah nak berinteraksi dengan masyarakat dan muslim sehingga kan wacana-wacana yang saya anggap sebagai ketinggalan zaman seperti contoh tentang uh, KPC, KP Harbi yang kalau kita tengok Abim sendiri tahun 70-an pernah membincangkan tentang macam mana muslim berinteraksi dengan masyarakat non-muslim uh, macam mana kita nak duduk dalam masyarakat non-muslim itu sendiri itu telah dibincangkan oleh Abim tapi kita hari ini masih lagi bincang macam macam ni sedangkan kehidupan kita sudah bercampur sebenarnya itu yang pertama yang keduanya adalah um, kita tengok parti politik pun sendiri kadang-kadang dia terjebak dengan wacana-wacana perkauman Uh, di Malaysia lah lebih-lebih lagi kita tengok macam itulah cara paling mudah untuk mereka nak dapat market dalam politik yang kedua yang ketiga ni kadang-kadang saya fikir sebab saya sendiri buat uh, kajian berkenaan dengan terorisme dan saya tengok ada beberapa problem besar yang berlaku untuk nak counter tentang terorisme ni adalah dalam penafsiran teks contoh macam ayat al-Quran Muhammad Rasulullah wallazina ma'ahu ashidda wal kufar ruhama ubainahu itu uh, Muhammad Rasulullah orang yang bersama dengan Muhammad itu keras terhadap kafir dan kasih sayang sama mereka jadi macam mana kita nak tengok teks penafsiran terhadap uh, asyidda al-kufar itu sebab kalau kita tengok dalam wacana orang gerakan Islam lebih-lebih lagi itulah antara ayat yang mereka menjadikan alasan untuk mereka bermusuh dengan masyarakat dan muslim semua juga macam berlaku pada surah Al-Ma'idah yang yang berlaku di Indonesia melibatkan pada Ahok uh, uh, la yatakhidul mu'minun dan kafir dan awliya abidul mu'minin jadi saya nampak kadang-kadang problem kalau kita baca dalam teks-teks turas itu sendiri kadang-kadang penafsiran itu sendiri memang membawa kepada uh, pemusuhan terhadap masyarakat uh, non-muslim itu sendiri jadi macam mana kita nak tengok penafsiran itu untuk kita nak adapt dalam kerangka uh, kontemporari pada hari ini terima kasih Allah Alhamdulillah Assalamualaikum Assalamualaikum. Uh, my name is Ang Jobo. I am from Myanmar, Burma, uh, and I am a member of uh, Rohingya community uh, in Myanmar. And my question is: We are approximately two million people, and we are victims of identity politics in Myanmar. For the last uh, 40 years, we have been uh, oppressed by structural uh, discrimination, systematic discriminations that start from access to health, access to education, and access to um, very basic livelihoods. And today, we are approximately 500 remaining people, 500,000 remaining people inside the country, and uh, a million and a half outside of, of Myanmar, including Malaysia. And uh, how we can, like, in this era where uh, Burma is claiming to be transiting to democracy, and Buddhist majority are saying that we are not able to live together with these Muslims where we are being uh, labeled as like terrorists or, or, or they're going to be uh, taking the country or, or dominating the nations and things like that. What would be your advice for Rohingya Muslim to position ourselves to integrate into the larger society in a peaceful uh, Islamic way? Thank you very much. Datuk Sri. Um, boleh. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Datuk Sri, the last time I remember um, asking you a question was when I was a student in the United States in five years ago. So thank you. Um, yang berhormat Datuk Sri, um, saya melihat bahawa Datuk Sri istiqamah uh, saya saja uh, istiqamah dalam uh, uh, memperjuangkan. Um, apa yang dalam Abim sebagai tagline menegak kebenaran dan keadilan dan naratif yang Datuk Sri um, baru uh, uh, membicarakan tadi saya rasa sebenarnya itu bukan dominant discourse uh, in many parts of the world including Malaysia when you do become eventually the prime minister of Malaysia how would you uh, how would you bring to the forefront this dominant discourse, which I believe to be the future of the civilized world. The discourse on beyond the politics of identity, 
the narrow uh, politics of, of, of race and, and religion and to be the, um, uh, the, 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 the rest of us, the Muslims, and everyone to be championing uh, this important discourse. Thank you. Makasih, uh, no, uh, because I'm so I do the internally the kite, um, daily, um, bangkitkan satu persoalan yang sangat uh, relevan. Ia satu kontradiksi. Ia juga satu misnoma. Mana mungkin? Orang yang menguasai politik Yang memegang kekuasaan Merasa takut dan tercabar Oleh golongan kecil Dan Mengapa golongan kecil Yang punya kekuatan ekonomi yang besar Masih ada juga rasa tercabar Ini yang sebut Nama jasa Illusion of identity ya. Kerana Mereka hanya mencari Hela Aspek-aspek yang dianggap kita itu agak lemah dan kemudian menaikkan bangkitkan kemarahan rakyat. Apakah ini benar? I mean, it's a fundamental question. Is it true that they genuinely believe? I mean, the leaders, the rakyat, of course, will follow. Do they genuinely believe? Mind you, they have the power. What is stopping them from assisting the poor? Why is there gross injustice and after decades of independence, more than half a century, you have grinding poverty and gross inequality? Why do you then enrich yourselves and your families and condone them and then corruption? Is it because of the Chinese or the Malays or the Javanese or the Raya? It's because of you, the enemies. Yeah. Dan ini harus saya terjemahkan. Apakah ini dalam bentuk wacana yang kita agak tertakar? Orang Melayu yang majoriti merasakan tertakar oleh Cina. Cina yang kaya dengan ekonomi tertakar dengan Melayu. Jadi hidup ini sengsara semua. Tetapi yang sebenarnya menekan itu siapa? Negara ini hasil masuknya di antara terkaya. Minyak, gas, apa sawit, segala macam. Ya. Tetapi Kemiskinan masih di tahap tinggi. Tentu ada kejayaan. Saya jangan nafikan. Tetapi angka-angka itu juga menipu. Kita sebut dari baik pemerintah lama dan baru kemudian baru dirubah sekarang mengatakan tinggal 0.5 persen yang miskin. Begitulah lebih kurang. Tetapi semua kajian UNDP, World Bank, UNICEF, JOMO, um, Sarasitas. Sebab Sarah Rasia, Raja Rasia, Fatimah Kari, semua menunjukkan bahawa kemiskinan ketara di kalangan rakyat ini sekitar 20 persen bagi Malaysia ini tidak boleh diterima, unacceptable. Why? Because we are there with so many, so much riches, wealth. Okay. Sekarang kerajaan mula menerima dan menyatakan ini satu penyataan tetapi salah siapa mana kita guna kuasa memperkayakan budak yang kecil kemudian cari jalan pertahankan kita ya. ini yang saya bagi saya yang sebenarnya masalahnya adalah masalah golongan elit golongan yang berkuasa golongan berkuasa yang nasu serakah membolak harta seperti khazanah negara itu jadi khazanah keluarga ini yang menyebabkan rakyat itu terhimpit dan miskin kemudian mereka juga eh perompak-perompak ini turun ke bawah kita perlu selamatkan kaum kita ya, saya perlu dalam kempen kasar saya tapi ini tak boleh lah kita, kalau saya nak kata ah, kasar ini Ya, selamatkan kau Jadi orang pun ya. ya Jadi kita, yang kita boleh cakap soal keadilan Keadilan ini merentas kau Anwar ini liberal dan plural Ada yang dongok-dongok pun terima Kerana yang bicarakan itu bersetubah 
Sudah kebenaran tidak ada tersangkut pada pakaiannya. Kebenaran itu pada perlaksanaan kata-kata ini udah beli selendra ini ya. Ya. Tapi kalau dalam dalam, dalam Quran jelas ya lima tahun lama lah tak ada melaksanakan. Ini yang pertama ya. Dan ini terkait dengan apa ya? Nanti kalau ada ruang Dewi kupas ini. Ini sih 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 ini is not real. India bawa Gandhi, Gandhi kita setuju tak setuju tak boleh nafi memang satu negarawan besar ulu. Kemudian Jawaharlal Nehru kalau sudah baca pidato dia kemerdekaan Trist with Destiny itu powerful speech. Mana satu ikrar dan janji dengan destiny masa depan. Dia tidak bicara soal kaum atau Hindu atau Muslim. Dia destiny rakyat India yang harus dibangkitkan semua. Sekarang rosok kegagalan pimpinan yang derita dan sengsara yang gaduh membunuh semua ini rakyat pemimpin yang betul Gosli menembak mati Gandhi tetapi umumnya pergaduhan itu di kalangan rakyat yang membangkitkan api ini yang siege mentality ini rasa tertekan terhadap ini pemimpin dan cara penyelesaiannya ialah menyedarkan rakyat ini peranan pada badan uh, masyarakat madani dakwah ini dia bukan dakwah untuk menanam kebencian menanam kemanusiaan ini yang penting uh, seperti yang sudah saya lakukan dan insya Allah kita teruskan. Kerana tidak tidak mungkin majority merasa under siege. Tapi what are the leaders doing? Why they feel in this mission? Okay. I mean, this relates to your question about Myanmar. Why? How is it? We have abandoned our moral responsibility. We are not interfering in the internal affairs of Burma by people being killed and affecting the economy of the region. It is our responsibility. Waste our humanity. It does not matter whether it is done by Buddhists or Hindus or Muslims. An unjust, uh, unjust act remains an unjust act. So that's why we have been calling. I remember years back because Aziza knows Aung San Suu Kyi. She wrote a letter years back personal letter appealing to Aung San Suu Kyi no, it's to no avail because finally it's power politics it's real politics it's how you could uh, get the support on a personal note may I say this I can choose to be a more popular leader among my people if I start harping on Malay supremacy in this country, but I decided that I should take what is right and just. Dan untuk ini saya menghantam keras di kalangan beberapa kelompok masyarakat Melayu dan parti Melayu, karena mereka merasakan saya tidak kuat membela nasib Melayu. Sudah dari segi bahasa. Saya lebih konsisten dari beberapa penyanyi ini. Dari segi kemiskinan yang majoritinya orang Melayu, yang orang Islam di negara ini, dan bumi putra, termasuk kelompok-kelompok kecil masyarakat Cina di pinggir bandar, dan India di ST, saya lebih keras. Ya, saya dipenjarakan dan bersiwa balik kerana isu kemiskinan rakyat. Jadi saya tidak perlu operan jati. Ya. Tetapi inilah uh, yang disebut oleh uh, Dewi Fortuna Anwar tadi Bagaimana kesan daripada ilusi kejahilan Dan diperalatkan oleh beberapa kelompok pimpinan politik Saya tidak percaya mereka yakin dengan penyelesaian itu Tetapi mereka yakin dengan modus operandi itu Cara, taktik, kotor dan jijik yang memperhambakan rakyat untuk kekuasaan. And this sudah 
we will have to fight and fight them hard. Wanji, saya yang kena pendek kat sikit. Ashda ala kuffar ruhama wa'inahu. Jadi dia kata, memang Quran sebut keras pada orang kuffar dan baik pada kalangan orang Islam. Ya, tapi fundamental issue itu, kuffar itu siapa? Kuffar itu yang menolak keadilan, yang menolak kezaliman, yang menolak kebenaran. Ya. Tetapi soal umpamanya hidup, antara agama tidak pernah dianjurkan perang. Ya. Jadi kita umpamanya apa apa nak lakukan? Yang perompak besar ada di Indonesia itu perampok. Itu bunyian bena. Perampok perampok. Kita perompak perompak. Jadi kita maafkan. Maafkan, kebayangkan. Cakap Islam berdegar-degar. Ayat Quran dan hadis itu. Uh dimuntahkan begitu apa tetapi untuk kuasa dipadamkan segala kezaliman ini saudara dan anak ada yang terpukau dan terperdaya jadi sebab itu saudara saya fikir yang 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 disebut oleh Wanji tadi penasiran itu penting saya tidak percaya sama sekali bahawa Islam itu mengesahkan mengiyakan Kezaliman kepada sesiapa Bukan kekuatan Islam Jadi kita kena faham ya, Konteks yang disebut ya, ma Ulama mana Muktabar Yang muktabar Yang mana Yang memberi penafsiran seperti yang dibuat oleh Tukang-tukang jerit Di beberapa Desa ini Tukang jerit digunakan istilah oleh Profesor Husein Alatas ya. Bukan saya, saya tidak saya hanya kut beliau Profesor Hussein Latas dia menyebut ini ini sebenarnya tukang-tukang dari Islam ya. memberikan hukuman dan penafsiran yang tidak tepat nah, mengangkat bukan Islam sebagai aulia dia bagi negara yang majoriti Islam tentunya kita angkat orang tanya saya saya jawab tentu dia ikut majoriti tapi kalau kita dah pilih sistem begini nak mewakili orang Wakil di Bukit Bintang 90% Orang Islam Oh tak boleh Kerana awliya itu tidak Islam Masih ada Kupasan pengujahan dumu Begini lupa 90% Wakil Bukit Bintang Parlamen Bukit Bintang bukan Islam Masih dibangkit soal awliya Jadi penafsiran itu penafsiran Gampang, mudah Untuk selera pendengar Yang ada sentimennya Jadi yang 10% ini Kita mesti letak calon Pertahankan orang Islam Kerana ini tuntutan Al-Quran Wallahu'ala Myanmar ada jawab Ya yang akhir tadi My sister Sabdia ya Bersa Sabdia Ini tapi tadi Okey tentang naratif itu Bukan saya nak pertahankan Nabi punya lah ya Si Fadil ada kau tak pertahan dia marah Tetapi You know as far back as 1979 Dari Sofia 79 we were I was not in politics 79 Kita ada debate di kalangan leadership Bagaimana Kita ada kaitan dengan Bukan Islam, Hindu, Budhis, Buddha, Hindu, Kristian, sebagainya. Bagaimana kita nak bincang hak mereka ketimbang atau berbanding hak kita? Naratif selama ini di dunia Islam ialah hak bukan Islam di negara Islam. Itu yang kita baca, yang kita belajar, Al-Mawardi dan sebagainya, hak bukan Islam, hak demi. Tapi kita kata ini pertama, dia bukan masuk kategori negara Islam keduanya, kita tidak boleh letakkan dia sub kategori yang rendah akan menjadi masalah jadi pada masa itu lagi kita pilih pembincangan tentang Islam dan masyarakat berbagai kaum maknanya ubah Islam 
dalam negara yang ada pelbagai kaum. Tahun 7080 sekarang diserang saya, ah, anu ini pluralistik. Itu diputuskan oleh jamaah Abi masa itu Sidi ada, Fadil No ada, oh, dan nama yang pimpin-pimpin. Dan kita itu beranikan diri dalam keadaan kita tidak tahu nak rujuk kepada siapa ini. Ha, amin ataupun bicara tentang warga rakyat, warga negara Malaysia, Islam dan bukan Islam. Bagaimana kita? Itu kita yang muda muda tidak tidak semestinya kita mampu uh, mencernakan secara yang lebih ilmiah atau lebih teratur. Tidak mungkin ya. Adalah makno nawi bagi saya buku teks buku tak lama saya baca. Tapi pada masa itu kita beranikan diri karena kita sudah ada satu sikap kita umur 20 an masa itu. Tapi kita sudah menangkap masalah bahawa tidak boleh kita anggap bukan Islam itu kategori kedua dalam satu negara Islam. Pada masa itu lagi sebelum saya menyertai Amno lagi. Jadi kalau saya bicara sekarang Mengapa mengatakan Anwar ini kerana terlalu gairah dan obses mau jadi perdana menteri apa saja dia lakukan termasuk beri hak kepada bukan Islam tidak benar saya konsisten ya, naratif kita sebagai gerakan Islam masih mau menyedarkan rakyat bahawa negara ini harus bicara soal keamanan dan keadilan. Pada masa itu, tahun 80, 79, 80 Sudah kita kritik dasar ekonomi baru Bahawa jangan jadikan dasar ekonomi baru itu Memperkayakan kelompok kecil Melayu Dan meminggirkan majoriti rakyat Melayu so, Itulah keadaannya Dan saya harap saudara Ini terkait dengan soal peaceful coexistence Bagaimana kita bicara tentang peaceful coexistence? Kita kata ah, Cina ini dia okey tapi dia demi dia tak boleh sama ha? dia tak boleh duduk-dudukan ni tak boleh duduk-dudukan ni work out. Saya tu kita tahu sama kalau saya kata dalam kabinet semua jawatan penting bagi bagi Cina. Oh, Melayu tidak boleh terima. Dan orang Cina pun tahu. Jadi oleh demikian kita dalam koalisi ini harus bicara dewasakan dan Cari penyelesaian yang lain Yang saya Tekankan satu perkara di sini Iaitu naratif kita Mesti kembali kepada Akar dan pangkalnya Kita perlu Negara ini aman Dan kita pastikan negara ini Melaksanakan keadilan Bukan aman perintah Untuk merompak kekayaan Memperkaya golongan kecil Kemudian marah kepada rakyat Tidak kalau tak kenalkan oleh kerana perkara ini yang saya dapatkan tak dari bulan nanti kalas saya jadi advisor kepada ini. Tetapi ya, saya bukan bukan pesimistik ya, insya Allah saya akan dapat ini yang dengar dengar kabar ini dengan bulan. Tetapi saya nak katakan saya tidak sanggup pada umur sekian untuk hanya ikut uh, tren yang menggila begini. No. You know, I have promised make an oath of honor that I want this country to remain peaceful and just to every single citizen of this country. <laughs> and, be, and, and by saying that, I should at least assure my majority Malays that they will be more secure under a just militia than a racist Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Jangan serantau hidup bersama dalam budaya damai 2020. Saya akhiri wabilahi taufiq wa hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Sebagai maklumat tambahan, dimohon kesemua peserta persidangan untuk mengambil tempat di tengah hadapan pentas bagi sesi bergambar. Dijemput juga yang berhormat dan dif-dif kehormat untuk turut serta.